G'day, Dr. Carl here, and as you can tell from the hat, I'll be watching scenes from Indiana Jones, various movies, commentating thereon. Let's kick things off with Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The ants pick up a random Russian villain, take him away, presumably to devour him. So firstly, can they pick him up? Yes and no. On one hand, ants are capable of carrying hundreds of times their own weight, but in this case, there's simply not enough ants to carry the weight of that person. Secondly, can they devour him physically? The mass of the ants and the size of their guts is not enough to equal the volume of the food that is in his body or flesh, so they couldn't devour him. And finally, would they do it? Ants are incredibly intelligent in a group. The individual ant has got an IQ of virtually zilch, but you put them together in a group and they can build a home and an army and a place where you store food and they can have very complex social behavior. Learning, however, a new behavior of picking a random villain and then taking him away, that's a little bit hard to believe. And now onto even more Indiana Jones. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So this raises the big question. What are the chances of finding and then surviving a nuclear blast in a convenient lead-lined refrigerator? So let's just run through it. Firstly, do lead-lined fridges exist? Yes, they do for storing radioactive pharmaceuticals. The amount of lead, even in practically solid walled lead fridge, is not enough to help them survive the radiation blast at a distance of only two kilometers. Then the pressure wave comes through, picks him up, and then flies him inside the fridge through the air, and he experiences a G-force of 1,500 Gs. The maximum force that humans can survive and not die is around 40 Gs. So a 70 kilogram human weighs 2.8 tons. Now, under that sort of G-force, what kills you is that with regard to your heart, the arteries get torn loose. The heart keeps pumping, but the blood just goes into the chest cavity. You're going to die. This is not 40 Gs. This is 1,500. So completely unrealistic, but God damn, it's gripping TV. And now for a scene from Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. What do you do? The whole thing we are here. You've got to Oh my God. Ah, this raises the deep philosophical question of can you live without your heart? Um, the answer is no, let's just run through it. So firstly, your heart is remarkable, about the size of two clenched fists, and yet in the average lifetime, it will pump a weight or mass of blood equal to two or three giant American nuclear-powered aircraft carriers weighing 100,000 tons each, a quarter of a million tons in an entire lifetime. It's a remarkable organ. If you do not get this high-pressure, oxygenated blood going into your brain, you'll go unconscious in 5 to 15 seconds. On the other hand, there was a lot of magic going on. We, we, we can do a kind of a magic in surgery where we take over those functions of pumping and oxygenation in surgery, and we can take a human's heart out of the loop for minutes or several or many hours, but this involves a very complex team of people doing it. On the other hand, magic can do a lot of stuff much more easily, so I'd give it a definite maybe, because I kind of believe in magic. Now, shift a little bit, staying back in time, Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. What have I got to look forward to here? Kings. He's got a cup. Eternal life. Eternal life. He drinks from the cup. Magic music. OMG. Oh, 
super advanced aging. Decades per minute. So, what you're looking at here is the principle that everything is made of atoms. How are you going to get those atoms going through incredibly accelerated senescence? is the phrase. Not really possible biologically. You're going to have to have some sort of advanced atom manipulation technology, which we're getting close to, but we have definitely not got at the moment. So in this case, I put it down entirely to magic. But on the other hand, the bad guy did die. And now for another scene from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Go, baby! Right on, They're in their plane. without parachute. Oh! They're on a life raft. Oh. And they survive. Okay, firstly, famous study back in the 1990s showed that cats are more likely to survive when they jump from a 32-storey building than from a seven-storey building because the cats reach their top speed, chillingly called terminal velocity, by around the seventh storey. And that's when the maximum, maximum fatality rate is because they're accelerating, they're accelerating, and they're worried. But the longer you give them after the seventh story, they don't go no faster than 100 kilometers an hour. That's their terminal velocity. The suck of gravity is balanced by the resistance of the wind. They're doing 100 kilometers an hour, and then they've got time to think, I'm a cat, I'm cool, I'll just sort of lay out. And they are the animal exactly the right size that they can, in most cases, overwhelmingly survive. Humans, however, can reach 200 kilometers per hour, and that is not survivable. The G-forces are too much. Now, there have been a few cases of people surviving falls from aeroplanes. But in general, if you're going to land uh, just in a little rubber ducky uh, life raft on hard snow, forget it, it's not going to happen. But very engrossing footage, it really sucked me in. Oh my God, this is so sad, this is the last one. Here we go. Oh, he took one weight out and then rolled another weight in. Ah! The multi-thousand-year-old booby trap is still working. Oh, the giant rolling stone comes after him. Such a classic scene. Can a 2,000-year-old booby trap still function after 2,000 years? Firstly, the materials from what it's made. If you make it from something organic, like wood, that will change its dimensional characteristics over time, expand or contract or be eaten by ants, not so good. Metal like gold or bronze that will not degrade with time, you've got a better chance. Secondly, the environment. So if you've got a dry environment, you're better off because you might have something made of gold or bronze, but then if it's moist, and insects can go in there and have little bits of crud that they build on a pathway of internal mechanisms. Not good. So you want to have a dry environment. Do you need to maintain it? No. You've got to have something that is really simple. The fewer the moving parts, the better. And under those circumstances, you could have a booby trap that could run thousands of years later. Spielberg and Indiana. What a combination. So I've, I've taken notes on this. Um, all the way through, doing my homework, of course. It's duties, just like uh, Drop the Giants. Well, you, there, there is a duty I have here. Okay. Do you have any relation with archaeology of it? Do you cross over much with it in terms of... Oh, I love archaeology, especially the Antikythera object, which is the world's first computer made over 2,000 years ago, and we don't know who did it. You're going to love the new movie, then. That's what it's about. The Antikythera object? Yeah, about the, dial of yeah, the Dial of Destiny is that. You're kidding. No. Oh, man. 